said he was just pulling in. We're going to call this finance committee meeting to order. Uh, present are council members Cost, Bub, Blake, Marmy, and Frazier is walking in, I believe. Um, first item on the agenda is a request a request for appropriation in the amount of two hundred and forty six dollars and eighty nine cents. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, f the funds came in to the city from an estate and all we're doing is reappropriating them so that uh, um, the funds can be used for a, a headstone. Motion. Marker. Motion by Bub. A second by cost for an appropriation of $246.89. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none. Oh. For a headstone, you just said. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, what, what happened is the funds came in uh, from the family to the city for the headstone, and we're just reappropriating. Normally, the, the headstone dollars don't generally come to the city. They generally go directly to the headstone company. Oh, I see. So we're just reappropriating the funds. Any further questions? Seeing that all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $4,450.75. This is just a payout for an employee that has retired. Motion. Second. Motion by Bob. Second by Frazier. Questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing and directing, directing the mayor of the city of Newark to submit an application to the Ohio Department of Public Safety Office for federal fiscal year 2019 Ohio Traffic Safety Grants Program, Selective Traffic Enforcement Program, and the Impaired Driving Enforcement Program. These two grants um, come together. If you can't apply for one without the other, and um, this year Newark is again eligible to apply. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion by Frazier. <clears throat> second by Bub. Any questions and or discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, what's the timeline for this, and have we gotten this before? Well, we've applied for this grant every year. We're eligible. It's based on fatalities in the community. Um, it follows the grant follows the federal fiscal year, which is October through September. Okay. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $6,017. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is really just a pass through of funds. We have uh, changed our lease agreement for copiers and printers in the law director's office. These were funds that were received from the new company to pay off the old lease from the old company. We just need to expedite this because the bill is due and we need to move these funds through so we can write the check. There's no real impact on the budget, it's just money passing through. Motion. Motion by Frazier, second by Cost. Any questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $612,000. Good evening. This is from the Inter Intra Government Fund so that I can um, distribute the first quarter 2018 distribution to the JED. 
Z2. Second. Motion by cost, second by Frazier. Any questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion passes 5-0. Thank you. And the last thing on our agenda is request for appropriation in, in the amount of $8,228.14. Thank you. I'd like to ditto what Law Director Sasson said about the copiers. It's the same same situation we have. There's just money passing through. Motion. Motion second. by Frazier. Second by Bub. Any questions and or discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. And with that, this finance committee meeting stands adjourned. Next up is streets. All right, I would like to call this meeting of the streets committee to order. Those present are Lang, Hall, Blake, Lebutis, Marmy, Rath, and myself, Fennell. Uh, this evening on the agenda, uh, will we consider ordering number 18-15, vacating 10 foot wide alley, as shown on the plat of the Avalon allotment. As recorded in the plat book, page 3, page 82 of the Licking County Plat of Records, said alley running west from Showman Avenue, located south of Cherry Valley Road. Thanks. Uh, we, got, we had a request uh, petition from a property owner there, a property owner on the south side of the alley, uh, uh, obtained the signatures from the folks on the north side of the alley. And uh, so everybody adjacent to the alley has signed the petition. Uh, the property owner on the south wishes to uh, build a new home at that location and having uh, her half of the portion of the alley would be beneficial to her setback and so forth. So that's what the, what the reason for the request is. I um, guess if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. The police and fire department did review and uh, both of them had no concerns about vacating the alley. So. Just, a, just a point of, of reference there also, the, the alley on the back, which would be on the west side, that runs north and south of those properties up front on Showman, was vacated uh, previously, I think back in like the 1970s at some point, so. Um, uh, really vacating the, the portion of that the subject portion of alley will not create a, a dead-ended alley in there yeah. Brian is this just that vacant lot or does this include the lot also further south uh, where there's a property at now or where there's a structure at now is it the same owner? Do you know? It, the same owner owns many of these lots down through here, south of the alley. There's no that structure that's there. There's a, the past has been in horrid shape. Could be. That, that I don't know. Somebody wants Second. Motion by Ralph, second by Lang. Any other comments? discussion seeing none all those in favor of sending ordinance 18-15 along the full council say goodbye by saying aye. 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 aye aye all those opposed all right passes 7-0 and we move on to full council thank you with that i adjourn the meeting of the streets committee oh sorry up next is service all right, we'll call the service committee meeting to order. Those present are myself, Rath, Cost, Bob, Blake, and Lang. Up first, consider ordinance number 18-12, enacting amendments to Newark sewer use and sewer charges, ordinance 91-59, directing limited publication of the sewer use and sewer charges ordinance. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, I provide you with a bunch of information. Um, I'm not going to cover everything that's in there, but I want to, cut, I want to make sure you have all the information. Uh, but as you know, we have a long-term control plan 
uh, and that's a, a plan that we have to uh, eliminate uh, combined sewer overflows, CSOs. I'll probably use that term a little bit through here. So, um, and currently we have um, within our MPDS permit, which is our discharge permit, a requirement to get all this work done by January of 2025. That's not going to happen. We've uh, we've we've uh, produced another uh, long-term control plan submitted to Ohio EPA, EPA, and we are. Um, proposing to have all this work done in the next 25 years. Um, but in order for us to get started in, into this plan, um, and I, I guess I should point out the, um, the plan, if you have your map there, this just shows where the work is going to be um, at in, within the city. It's mostly in the core of the city, near the downtown. That's where all the combined sewers are at. Um, and we have proposed a five-year plan, a five-year increment plan. Uh, so every five years, regroup and do the next five years and, re and that kind of thing. That's that's what we have planned to do. So I've set this out and it's kind of color coded into each of the five years of where work is going to be. If you look at the next page, it has the cost of the projects and kind of a short uh, title of each project, um, and then kind of the proposed year we have to do that that plan um, and then a total of somewhere between 65 and 70 million dollars for all those projects to get us down to uh, to meet the uh, Ohio EPA mandate uh, uh, for or close per year behind that then is just a description uh, and, I, and I put a picture of each project with has a, a little of, of what area it is and what the what the uh, project is just a, a one or two lines so you can see where it's at it's mostly sewer lines I mean it's not anything glamorous we're not going to have any you know thing looking too fancy here it's going to be all sewer lines and things like that but uh, um, so you, so that's just kind of a description of all the projects that have to get done um, this this plan has been submitted to Ohio EPA. Uh, basically, uh, I mean, it's not been it's not been approved. What we're trying to do is get them to put it into our new MPDS permit. Our MPDS permit is, is renewed every five years, part of the reason for the five year thing. Uh, but our current permit was up in July of last year. It has not been issued. The new permit has not been issued. Uh, we're still. Um, they are kind of pushing us towards a 20 year plan. Uh, we feel that's. Uh, too much of a hardship on us. 25 years would help would help tremendously, and so we're, that's where we're in this negotiation of, of how many years this is going to get done. We're hoping to go for the 25 years. Well, they'll go for the 25 years, and um, um, and we can get it done affordably for everybody. So, <clears throat> so that's the plan. I'm not going to go into a lot more detail what all that is, but basically it's it's reworking some pipes and, and the sewer system to try and get more flow to the wastewater plant and have less overflows is what it's what it's all designed to this has to do with you know we've modeled the system we've done a lot of engineering and this is what we've come up with um, I'm certainly welcome and you're certainly welcome to give me a call if you got any questions about any of those plans I can go over those in detail I don't think we want to spend a whole lot of time talking about those specific plans here um, except to say that this is the plan that we've come up with that helps us or that will let us meet the regulation um, uh, that the EPA has mandated upon us so I should also say we're uh, we've kind of what we're doing is making this into what we're calling an integrated plan. It is also um, um, part of that plan is to replace a lot of our aging infrastructure, especially in the downtown area. Um, we just recently had another sewer collapse uh, right in front of the Catholic Church. Uh, the whole entire manhole fell in. There was about a seven by five foot void underneath the con underneath the pavement there last week. Uh, that whole sewer line is in bad shape, and that's part of this project is to replace that sewer line all the way down through here. Uh, it ties into the 4th Street, which, which we, we feel there's problems with that as well. So uh, there is some urgency in getting some of this done, and some of that has to do with how we're timing these things, what projects go when. Uh, the, some of the worst infrastructure is going to get done first kind of stuff. So, um, <clears throat> so that's a little bit about the projects. Uh, the, the next thing I have there is a little bit about... Um, our rates and because this stuff's going to obviously cost money um, I provided you a thing from the Ohio EPA a little uh, um, excerpt I guess from the Ohio EPA's rate study I keep telling you, you know, we come to these things we say our goal is to stay in the 25th percentile of sewer rates um, I just felt we needed to uh, show you where this is coming from this is out of Ohio EPA's rate study 
2016 rate study is their, is their latest one. So if you turn to the second page, it's actually listed as page number nine, but it's, this is, these are excerpts out of their report. You can see the 25th percentile is anything $465 per year and less. Uh, if you turn to the uh, two pages back from there, you'll see the excerpt from the, from the rate study. And I have highlighted there, Newark is at $417. Um, so we're still under the 25th percentile um, as of 16 or 117 as well. And we'll continue to stay under that based on the projected rate increases um, that um, we would see. The first page shows you what, what the annual rate increases are for statewide. Um, uh, this represents, I believe, 60% of the water and sewer agencies within the state of Ohio. Right so it's right, a pretty I'm good. Sure what, I'm not sure which is the first page. First, first page of the rate stuff I was just showing you there. The page three. It says page three. Yeah. Um, if you look at percent increases, you can see that most uh, uh, places are, are are in that four, five, six percent rate increase on an annual basis. Um, and so we see that continuing on, so we think that we're going to stay below that 25th percentile with the, what we're projecting to, to propose tonight. So um, I also provided in behind that on these charts are just some local, other local cities. Um, you can compare those rates. We're, we're certainly underneath all those uh, other cities, Granville, Heath, Hebron, Johnstown, uh, Lancaster, Zanesville, um, uh, Licking County. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of below everybody here in the area. So just so you know that our rates are, uh, I want to just provide you that information because we keep coming and saying, hey, our rates are pretty good, but okay, so here's a little bit of proof so you, you don't think I'm just up here talking, right? So, um, <clears throat> so based on that then, we uh, based on the, on the projects we have going, and we, we've looked at some of our rates, we uh, hired a consulting firm to come in and look at, at our um, rate structure and look at our future rates and, and and we did a rate study, and we put in all these future project costs into this study to see where we would see where we would end up at the end of this project. To make sure we have the proper amount of money uh, to pay for these projects. Um, I provided you this document, which has it says Hazen on the front of it. This is just the um, uh, the protocol we use for the study. You're welcome to read through that just so you can kind of see how we go about these things, what we look at, you know, we look at, you know, future value of money and all these things we got to look at, uh, project uh, what the uh, co uh, cost of living increases are and, and uh, you know, and as, as rates go up, we got to look at our consumption going down and all these kind of things. So this goes into a rate, a rate model. And so that's how we've established how much money we need. Again, I'm not going to go into great detail on this because it, it, it gets very complicated. I'm just certainly give me a call and go through all this, but you're welcome to read through there and see what the what the procedures are and how that how that um, um, is done. So, um, having said all that, um, what has ended up what, what what came out of this rate study was we had several choices to get this um, all these all these projects uh, paid for in the future. And we could wait until the year 2025 and have a 5% rate increase um, on top of our current structure, which has a 2.3% rate increase every year until the year 2030. That's, that's in the ordinance today. That's set by ordinance, and that's what's going to happen uh, currently. Um, but with all the projects we got going on, we, can, we, got, we have a choice of saying, okay, we can wait until 2025 raise that rate an additional 5%. That makes it a, a 7.3% rate increase that year. Um, so that's one option. The option we and, and the administration, we've talked to the administration and have agreed that we think is the best approach is that we can we can start, and, and this was all done in a model, okay? We can, we can plug down Brazini's models and see where the money goes kind of stuff. So um, it's part of that protocol. So you, you so, so we believe that the best approach is to pass this ordinance now, which would increase the sewer rates in 2020 by 1% additional, in 2021, 1% additional, and 2022, 0.7% additional. So you'd have a 3.3, 3.3, and 3 in those three years. So basically a smaller increase over a little bit more of a time, and... Um, uh, which would have less impact on on people overall, um, and and we get that done now. It's in place. 
we can start moving forward with all these projects. You'll hear, hear from me here in a little bit again about a loan for already one of these projects that's in this long-term control plan that we're working on right now, and we're working on loans to get that project going. So these things are, this is, this is all rolling, right? So, um, <clears throat> so the next question would be, okay, what, what, what is that impact to people? You know, what, you know, what does that 1% mean? Um, uh, so for a minimum user, if you remember, we have on the sewer side, we have minimum sewer rates. Uh, the minimum rate is, is what we call our lifeline rate. It's a little bit lower. You use a minimum amount. You pay less on a certain, uh, on the debt portion of your bill. Uh, so somebody that's in the, in the minimum usage category would see an extra 13 cents the first year, which is, is 2020, uh, another 13 cents the next year, and then 8 cents the next year. And when you add that all up, it's a it's an additional dollar twenty six per household or per minimum user in the year twenty twenty three. Um, for a typical user, somebody that's using um, uh, what we would call a typical household usage, uh, which is I think uh, five thousand gallons or six thousand gallons. It's, it's seven consumptions. I don't know what that comes out to be, but but what would be a typical household usage is going to see. A total of a two dollars and ninety cents additional with the with the rates already in place, but that only adds an extra eighty nine cents to the overall bill in those in that year in those in the final year. So per year, uh, per month, that's a monthly uh, cost okay. at the end of that. Yeah. So um, so that is what we are here to propose. I have presented an ordinance then. That changes our sewer use ordinance, which, which is where our um, um, sewer rates are at, uh, to modify it so that we increase the rate in 2020 to um, two, uh, 3.3, 2021 3.3, and 2022 3.0. So, any questions? Mr. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Loomis, I'm just curious, where was there discussion about the commercial industrial classes? Where, why have those not been recommended to change or anything? Well, those would change as well. At what point will they change? Same, same, they get the same percentage as everybody else. I was just I'm looking at this chart, and it says it has the same 2.4, 2.4. It has this, it doesn't. That, you're probably looking at the, at what year is that right there? This is um, for 2020. What page, 2020. Are you, what page are you on so the rest of us can follow along? It's in the ordinance, the second page. You have residential classes at 26 cents minimum, and it goes up to $1.40. The commercial class stays the same, industrial class stays the same. That's the new rate from what it was to that number there. So, the, so, so those would be this, the same. I mean, they're the same numbers as the classes, but that's increased by that amount. So this number already uh, incorporates the number right. that you're talking right. about. Right. So that that is an increase. Okay. Uh, there, the difference is that minimum you pay less on the on the debt a minimum, and that's how they get this lifeline rate thing. That's why you see that difference. Industrial users pay less because they pay surcharges. So that's, that's kind of where the, the, the difference comes with them. So, so how does this affect like, industrial users, generally speaking? Well, they'll they'll see the the three percent increase in their bill. I, I haven't gone through all the industrial users. Obviously, we have some that have some fairly good sized bills. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the point being that uh, we're still lower than most people in the area. Um, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, there, there is impact on them, obviously, uh, but uh, um, I can run through all their, I don't have that here, but we can do that, but it does it does have that impact on them, so. Okay. Mr. Chambers. Uh, yeah, just curious, the decision um, to start in 2020, is it too late to implement for 2019 to spread this out over more years, or? Uh, you know, yeah, you, you could do that, I mean, we went back and forth with all kinds of it's 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 a model mm -hmm. you can put in all kinds of percentages 
you know, I mean, yeah, could we do point six here and point? I mean, you, you, the, the possibilities are endless. What seemed to be the kind of the, the best scenario that we feel was this one one and point seven. It just it gave us it gave people another year to okay they're already getting a raise and now they know it's coming a year out. Um, so that's really the kind of the whole justification of that. Certainly, if, if that's you know that's what we want to do, we can go back and re redo the, the the numbers and we'd be changed slightly. Um, again, we went through I don't know how many scenarios. I mean, you know, we just kept plugging in. Not oh, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? It, it, the possibilities again are. No, just, we don't need to change. I was just curious. That yeah, that. that's really the only reason was it was a year out. We could tell people it's coming. It wasn't like you know in six months it's going to be here. It's, now this is a year and six months. Right. You know the one one and point seven seemed to be the the best, the lowest, and, and instead of going five, you know that kind of thing. And so, it, you know, yeah, it, it's. Um, yeah, would, go ahead. Um, Pardon my ignorance on this. Just curious, what what goes out to the consumers as far as when we when we have rate changes? Is there any kind of a letter explanation that they get? We put an announcement on the bill okay. um, uh, that that the rate has changed. Does it does it explain why it's changing, or just that it it will be changing? Uh, do we usually put that? We don't usually put explanations on there. Um, um, I mean, that's what's that? They'll call me. <laughs> well, they could, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we do put the projects out there. Okay. And I think in general, when somebody does call in, we would say, well, we got projects. It's, it's for this. You know, most of our rate increases are surrounding around um, projects. Uh, we see it in general. We have always seen a slight increase every year in our general use. The consumption goes up, so obviously our money goes up, um, and that's why the rates stay a little bit lower because you know you're now. So, yeah. And, and, you know, and the whole discussion, with, you know, with this rate stuff is, okay, at what point in time does the consumption start dropping that, well, now you got, you know, that's the whole, I mean, every business has that same problem, you know. Am I gonna sell, if I could sell all my hamburgers for 50 bucks, you know, I'd be making a zillion dollars, but you can't sell any because nobody wants to buy them, you know, kind of thing. Um, and so we're in, the, we're in the same boat as those people, and so you got to kind of see, see where, or, or any business, uh, you know, got to gotta price it right. Any other questions for the committee, Mr. Blake? Uh, Roger, what will be the experience of uh, when you're getting into these residential areas? Um, so you're, can you just go through like what when you go on a street, like it's going to be torn up. The person, what, just explain what's what's the resident going to experience when these. Well, we have, we have tried, you know, uh, the engineering department and us have tried to work together on these projects, and so when when we're going in and. and we refer to it as blowing up the street because <laughs> that's what we end up doing. You know, we, we really need to be putting in curbs, sidewalks, uh, water lines, you know, all the redoing it when we can. Now, obviously, you know, we've got limited funds, so we can't do that. So we do try to do as much as we can on every street that we try to do. Instead of, well, we got money this year for the sewer line and then money for the water line next year. Well, we're tearing up twice. We try not to do that. To try and minimize the impact, number one, and minimize the cost. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly never pleasant for for anybody that we have their, their roads torn up. Uh, I mean, we try to stress that you know, you look down the road, you have a nice new street, you got water, sewer, and, and storm, and and the gas company's been fairly good with working on it. You, know, you see now they're putting in all new gas lines ahead of our work that we're going to go down on Fourth Street. Um, you know, so it's going to be like almost like the downtown where you got almost all new utilities down. I mean, it's like it's like a new development downtown right now. It's new water, new storm, new sewer, new gas. You know, it, it's all new. And uh, um, so, can a person expect that when you go in and tear the road up and you put it back, it's going to look? Um, it's going to be approved with sidewalks and curbs, or is it? Or is well, that that should not be a guarantee? That's, that's not a guarantee. But so basically, it's just going to be repaved after the work is done. Right, and so. and and we. We try to put in curves at least, okay. so that we're, you know, and that's stormwater because that's how we're managing stormwater. Um, no guarantee that's going to happen on every in every neighborhood on every project. We just eventually run out of money, um, but we try to do that on the main roads especially, and then where we're tearing them up, the sidewalks run laterals in and stuff. We try to replace sidewalks as best we can. So, any other questions for committee? 
Mr. Frazier. Yeah, Roger. Um, Please go up so we can hear you in the microphone. Any one of them work. Uh, what's the value of doing this now versus 2019? Because the first rate change really goes into effect in 2020. Is there a possibility that our consumption and our projections of revenue are augmented in a year, and so maybe the percentage is less? Or what's the real value in doing this now versus 2019? I mean, I mean uh, the rate increase. You mean the value of putting the rate increase now? Yeah. The only real value now is that we know that we can move forward with projects. You know, I, I, Brian and I talk about this a lot. We, we start a project. You know, like the downtown project we started in what 2012 maybe you know so here we, you know these projects they, they take a long time for planning and, and we don't want to spend a lot of money on design and planning if we know that things aren't going to happen if these rates are in place now we know that okay that's going to happen then we can start really planning a little bit better into the future instead of saying well that might happen but you know we got to get the rate increase put in um and, and so this just kind of gives us the the ability to say okay that rate's going to be there now that doesn't say that all of a sudden people think the rate's too high and it's going to, you know, stop using water and things like that. I mean, they're not going to stop using water, but they're going to, you know, re reduce their consumption. Um, that's always a hazard in anything that we do or in any, in any business decision. But um, um, so... So the real benefit is on the planning side? It's really on the planning and, uh, and us having the... To, so, okay, that stuff's in place. We know that. Now, and, and on the other side is it's also, we think, is going to show EPA that yeah, we're serious about getting this work done. Give us a little bit of break about giving us some more time. We've got these numbers in place. We think we can do it. I think it gives us some negotiation uh, leverage to say, yep, we've all, you know, everybody in the council and the administration said, yep, we're willing to go forward with this at this pace. And here's the money. The money's there. Um, let's, you know, let's, let's do it. Uh, I think that gives us a real good position to argue with EPA about this extending these times out so that it's more affordable for everybody in the long run. So. Roger, does this not give the, our, our uh, high volume users, being our industrial companies, uh, longer to be able to plan, make long term plans and budget? Well, they're going to they're gonna know, yeah, they're going to know, okay, this rate's coming up here, but they're going to know what that, that is. Um, all right, any other questions from the audience? Right, do I hear a motion on this to send it to the full council? Second. Motion by Koss, seconded by Bob. Any further questions? All those in favor of sending this on to full council, to the saying say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. That passes 5 0. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Appreciate that. Up next, we'll consider resolution number 18 37, authorizing the directing the director of public service of the city of Newark, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract subject to the appropriation of funds for the off site disposal of lime sludge from Lagoon number no. 3 at Newark, wa Newark's water treatment plant. Mr. Lewis, you have the floor again. Yeah, this is a pro project, that, this is kind of an ongoing project. We have a lime treatment process at the water plant, we dry the lime in lagoons. Uh, and so every few years we have to have somebody in and clean that lime out. Uh, we hire a contractor, they take it out, put it on land, uh, land apply it for agricultural purposes. Uh, um, the contractor sells the lime to um, uh, farmers. And we basically pay for the hauling costs is what, how that really kind of comes down to. Uh, we, have, we have delayed a couple years in doing this. We've been doing it, we did, we've done it on a regular basis for about 10 years. We've kind of delayed a couple years because we got a little bit ahead of where we needed to be and so we try to save some money. Uh, we waited a few years but we do got to move forward this year because those lagoons are starting to fill up again. So we don't want to get into a position where they're full and then unless you guys all want to take a line home with you. So I know we've passed this legislation in the past and we've done this in the past. Is it necessary to do legislation every time we want to uh, hire somebody to hold them? This is a resolution that authorizes the service director to advertise for bids, and we do that for every, um, I don't know, are required by... Okay. By, yeah, that's fair enough. Good enough for you. I'll make a motion. Motion by Bob. Second. Seconded by Lang. Any other questions from the committee? Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor of passing this on the council for a full vote, signify by saying aye. 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 
All opposed, same sign. That passes 5 0. Up next, consider resolution number 1838, authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service of the City of Newark, Ohio, to apply for, accept, and enter into water pollution control loan fund agreement on behalf of the City of Newark for, for planning, design, and or construction of wastewater facilities interceptor optimization project and designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan. Yeah, this is one of those projects in the long-term control plan uh, that you have there. This is our, what we're calling our interceptor optimization. This is, uh, we're putting in three siphons throughout the downtown area. Uh, we're putting in a small interceptor to connect a couple pipes together. Um, and then we're cleaning some lines and a few other minor little uh, things with the CSOs as far as raising wear levels so that we can direct more flow to the, to the treatment plant. This is a, one of the smaller projects, but we do have, the reason this is on here now and the reason this floated to the surface was we did apply for and we got a 0% interest loan to do this work uh, through uh, Ohio Water Development Authority. And so we, we kind of felt it obligated us, or didn't obviously, we felt uh, obligated to go ahead with this project to get 0% money uh, to get it done, because uh, it, it, it's obviously a savings for us uh, to, to do that. Uh, I think we have this cost estimated at just under $2 million uh, right now. So, uh, so the design work on this project is supposed to be done by the end of this year, hopefully bid uh, by the end of the year, uh, December or first quarter of, of 19. So, um, so we're kind of running out of things to do, so we need another project. So. <laughs> Make a motion. Second. So by Bob. Second by Lang. Any questions from the committee? Questions from the audience? Okay. See none. Six, all those in favor of passing this on to council, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. That passes 5 0. Roger Lewis, show is over. Up next, consider resolution 18 13, ranking professional design. Firms in authorization, auth I'm sorry, in authorizing the Director of Public Service to negotiate an agreement for ag architectural services for fire station construction projects. Mr. Bob. Yes, sir. Just that. I want to engage an architect to draw up some plans for um, consideration of a fire station on the site of the old Baker Center across from COTC on Sharon Valley Road that would service all of the city of Newark, but help us cut down on the excessive run times in that area of town. Okay. Questions from the committee? Mr. Blake. Mr. Chairman, uh, Director Baum, I think we, uh, a few months ago now, I think the fire chief came and gave us a, I think we all have an understanding of why the reasonings for having a fire station over um, in that neighborhood, in that uh, area of town. Um, just because of the response times are high, and that we've known, I think many of us have known that for quite many years. Um, I'm curious as to what's the process to you're coming before council, this committee tonight, with this architectural services ordinance. What will be the further actions that we'll need to take to do to do this? So I will. I under, as I understand it, um, I'm. The law director is holding my hand uh, through this process. Uh, I've, I've asked him a couple questions. Um, so, should you approve this tonight, we'll engage with Wachtell McAnally or Wachtell McAnally to draw up plans for a fire station. We have preliminary plans for a 5,300 foot fire station. Um, we did your, their score sheets are attached to your legislation. We received two submissions. Um, we decided to go with McAnally. Um, should you approve this tonight, then as I understand it, we will get plans, we will come back with the cost. We will ask you to approve that. And then I anticipate um, a bid for constru a construction company. Um, then we will clear the land and begin building. We have the site, at, I would say, at our disposal. We've discussed a long-term 
um, lease and sale of the site uh, where we are on that uh, the the university is not going to they're going to facilitate whatever we need to do the, the I understand the city has to own a piece of property so I believe they're just going to release the property from us to us as a city but not until you agree to the funding so I guess it's kind of a, as long as we both agree, then we'll both jump in the pool together. But they're not going to understandably sign over a piece of property to the city if city council then isn't going to approve the cost of a fire station. So that, that's kind of where we are on that, if, if that's clear. Uh, everybody understand? They're not going to commit until we see that you've committed, but once you commit to the cost, they're going to turn over the property to us. If, is it all possible, at, I'm just thinking out loud here, um, to make us feel more comfortable about committing to, committing monies to a building on a piece of property we don't own, yeah. um, for them to submit a letter to council showing their good faith intent? I. You know, I you know, wouldn't. I wouldn't have a problem asking that. I suppose. See, but I'll, I'll jump in just for a second. Jeff, we've got a commitment in, in the form of a lease from them uh, that once we're ready to move forward with council action, they'll turn the property over for us at no charge. That commitment is in the lease that we currently have with them. Okay, that's pretty firm. And, and the only reason Steve didn't know that is because he wasn't part of that lease. Thank you. There you go. That makes me feel much more comfortable, warm, and fuzzy. Any other questions for Mr. Blake? Mr. Chairman, so my, okay, so tonight, um, this is to engage it with um, the architect to get some type hard of plans, plans, a hard plan. That you can derive you already have a for preliminary them. plan, so you're going to need a hard plan. And then you come back and say, okay, this is what we want to build, this is the cost of it. How, have you, consider, what's considerations have been there? I mean, how will, would we pay for something like this? On a, on a note. I'm sure we would so bond for it. We would borrow and, money. And what I'll say is there are already um, POs that have not been closed out from the last fire station to the tune of $380,000-ish that gives us a head start on the station. That I want to make clear, one PO for parking lots, one for fire stations. I, I can't buy a truck with this, and I can't hire a person with this. With any of that money, and the estimated total cost of something like this is going to be what? I, I couldn't give you a hard number yet. It will cost more than a million dollars. I would say it would cost less than I don't know. I hate to give you a I hate to give you a number. Um, I would hate for anybody to hold me to it and then it not. I haven't seen plans. I've got a guesstimate. I've got a guesstimate of 1 to 1.3. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see the plans. Decide if that set of plans that cost X amount of dollars is acceptable. If not, there will have to be a revision of the plans until the cost is acceptable. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a what if or a how much for how much at this point. I can't, I can't give you a final number. Or an approved plan because I haven't seen what the final plan would be. This is just to engage an architect to show me how much for how much. Once we approve this, if this is to be approved, um, and we set Lockto and McNally in motion to design, come up with a solid design, mm -hmm. what's the time frame between now and the point where we will have a relatively firm number as to the cost of the building. I can't answer that. I would have to ask Mackinac Wachdell McAnally. Six months a year. I, I don't I couldn't I can't give you that. I can't okay. give you that because I don't know what their work their their workload is at this point. You know, what if they've already have something in their mind if they're gonna go off the preliminary plan it could be two weeks, it could be two months, it could be four months, and I hate to give you a number and then not be able to deliver. I'd rather overpromise than underpromise, or underpromise than overpromise. Okay. 
Excuse me, I'll. I'll do you have any more questions? I do. Keep going. Okay. Okay, so we've had, um, so everyone likes a new fire station. I think we all understand the need for that new fire station. We have also heard about equipment needs and mm -hmm. staffing needs for the division. So what plan is there to staff and equip this building? Well, the chief would be responsible for staffing. I can tell you that part of them would come from station two, would be moved to, to station five. According to what the chief and I have talked about, the chief is responsible for stationing and transfer personnel. So what he decides to do is what we will do within reason, but he's the fire chief for a reason. We, we put our trust in him, he'll, he'll decide that plan. But what I'll say about equipment is, I have the uh, capital improvement purchases, actually the loan schedules. Um, in 14, we bought two squads. In 15, we bought one squad. In 17, we took possession of another squad. A pumper truck in 16, we just finished, you just authorized the payment to pay off a $90,000 reefer of another fire truck. And we just finished paying for a ladder truck last year. So, we bought 10 police cars, SUVs, and you've authorized us to buy three plane cars. And you got an invitation to come to a swearing in on the 21st that brings the fire department back up to 79 people. So I think we're doing pretty good. And we will continue to, to buy equipment as we can. And believe me, Dave Rhodes will tell you I'm in his ear every other day about buying safety equipment and he is enthusiastically supportive of that. But as far as a line item, I've got ideas and I'd like to talk to you about them, but you know, we'll have to do that at some point. Obviously not tonight, but I would love to see us be able to dedicate some money to buying equipment for the fire department and the police department and I hope you support me when I bring it to you. But we would have to find a specific funding stream for it. But I can't just, I can't not talk about a fire station and talk about police cars and then when the police cars are done talk about fire trucks. We're, we're, you know, the administration has 10 conversations going at one time about a whole lot of things. I talked to Dave Rhodes about plow trucks and mm. property maintenance is driving the oldest cars in the city and I'm going to need to buy them a couple of cars. I need to buy fire trucks and I need to keep hiring policemen. I gave four policemen conditional offers, by the way, yesterday, or Friday, sorry. Friday afternoon at the police department. We're hiring and we're buying. I, I, don't, I don't know what else I can do. I know it's not enough and it's never fast enough, but I, I think we're making good progress. Did you have more questions? Not this time, thank you. Questions from the audience? Mr. Frazier. So you're doing good work. So I like the things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when it comes to the target for the fire station, is it end of 2019 that we want to target? Or I'm we hoping we're moving people in next year, but I've never built a home, let <laughs> alone a building. So. So, so probably this year is getting through the funding and the design and the process and the process and then sometimes I would still hope they could break ground this year. I mean, we're pretty early in the year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I don't think 5,300 square feet ish as a target is that big, but not when this one was 20,000 ish. So you have any questions from the committee or from the audience? I mean, all right. Do I ever hear a motion for anyone? Motion. Second. Motion by Lang. Second by Bob. Any further questions? No, Chairman. Mr. Blake. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I just, as, with all due respect to Director Baum, I just don't feel as though that was really a, it's kind of like where, what situation do we handle? I mean, we know that we have a response time issue in that uh, area of our city, and we have this opportunity to build a building, but yet we also know in I understand that you're saying you're hiring people, but at the same time, I'm hearing from the fire chief that there is still staffing issues. And even taking people from the West End station to put them at this new station 
is going to stress our staff even further because that 79 number is for current stations, not adding this additional station. And so I, I, I just, I, I'm not comfortable with not having a plan for staffing. I'm not comfortable with, uh, you know, from what I understand is like this is going to be a medic unit facility primarily. Is that correct? I, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't want to limit it in its, in its scope. Okay. Well, either way, there, there seems to be needs, mm -hmm. both capital and both in human resources, at which I, I'm not, I guess I'm not clear on where we're going with that. And so to approve architectural services for a new building, it's like, well, wait a minute, we're going to build a brand new building, which we're going to have to borrow. I mean, we've been doing a lot of borrowing in this city. And so it's like, how much uh, general obligation debt does the city actually want to do it? Could we do it? Yes. But should we do it? That's the question where I'm kind of hesitant about. It's like, well, wait a minute, should we really, even if we go with uh, you know, the, the low number of 1.1, that's still another six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 that we're going to have to borrow for a new building. And so I'm, I am one of the opinion that I think that we're kind of, uh, this is kind of urgent. It seems to be urgent for whatever reason, and I don't understand why. Um, but I, I guess I would pause on it. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to be supportive of this ordinance uh, for those particular reasons. But I do respect everything that's being done. Um, but I just, I just don't feel comfortable with having the proper staffing and equipment needs to fill the building, um, and that's where I'm hesitant about this. It, it, trust me, it, it's I, I don't, I don't take any exception with any of that because there were long conversations about it before this was ever put into place. I mean, everybody's, you know, what, what should you do? But. Uh, I'm happy the mayor hired me and put the trust in me to make these decisions. So, um, as far as hiring new people, I would love to hire more people, but at a rate of $22,000 just for their health care, the idea of going above 79, which we will be on May 21st, gives me pause because that's every year and their salary on top of that. I mean, I. There's lots of lots of staffing conversations that that I'm enthusiastically ready to have, but you know I, I think we're at a point where hiring more full-time people it, it's tough. I, I would rather use our people more efficiently and talk about ways to do that before I start talking about throwing more people more people at it. And I, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, but even more people, is it, it's even retaining these people is what I'm concerned about. I mean, when I talk to the, and I don't even, where is the fire chief tonight? I mean, this is a topic that I think he should have been here to even further either endorse or to explain. It's like, you know, where's, he's, it's his division that we're discussing here, and I understand that you're his supervisor, but still, his uh, employees are going to be the ones that are going to be directly affected and, of course, providing safety to all of us. But it's like, where are we retaining our employees within that division? And that's that's the real question. I mean, it's like, because we heard reports about several weeks ago about people leaving to go to neighboring communities and neighboring departments. And so, like, are we providing proper wages and benefits to keep people? So I'm not going to dispute the numbers that you're throwing out, but it's the fact of are we able to keep these people and not having this uh, well, continuance of uh, hiring and firing. Uh, without, without going through their their collective bargaining agreement uh, point by point what what I will say is just a couple just a couple quick things you you brought up people leaving to go to West Licking and, and that was the division that they're that, that is the hot topic right now is people leaving to go to West Licking wow. fire yeah so a uh, uh, city of Newark employee with a married spouse pays because I did a little checking pays 65 62.53 per pay period for health insurance at West Licking, it's a buck eighty a pay, hundred eighty dollars a pay. That's a difference. Um, our guys are top top draw. We're rolling about three hundred hours of vacation time a year plus Kelly days. West Licking doesn't get Kelly days, so our guys have more time off. Guys at West Licking, they work a fifty-six hour week and they get paid for it. If we want to talk about buying those Kelly days and paying our people to work 56 hours a week and having more people here and, my opinion, more effectively using the 79 people in the books, I'm happy to talk about it. I think that is a fabulous idea. 
but it, it's just one idea. I get this is just committee. We're we're getting way out in left field, but there's lots of conversations. I'm perfectly happy to have. But it goes to the point. Bob, it goes to point. I appreciate your your candidness and, and, and your willingness to delve into other areas. Um, I, I think right now we're we're starting to get out in the weeds, and while all of those My conversations fault, thank need you for your talk. to happen, and, and all of those topics are discussion worthy, without a doubt. Uh, I'm not so sure that that's applicable for this topic in, in, in this committee. Thank you. Did you have a... Just one quick follow-up. You know, as, as uh, representative for the fifth ward, where I think we've got uh, some of the longest response times, and as uh, was demonstrated by the chief, you know, I, I respectfully disagree. I think there is absolutely urgency to this matter, to getting a uh, fire station closer to the fifth ward to I said it wasn't improve, improve, excuse me, sir. It, to improve the response times over in the fifth ward because I think it is a life and death situation in that in that respect. Um, with that, I'd like to move the question to a vote. All right, all those in favor of sending us on to full council for a vote, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same aye. sign. Aye. We're going to move on to full council four to one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we're not done. Yeah. Uh, up next, discuss, uh, we'll discuss Ordinance 18-14, change in the zoning classification of certain real property, generally described to as 2250 Horns Hill Road, City of Newark, Licking County, Ohio, from that of Single Family Residence Zoning District to Planned Unit Development Zoning District. Who do we have here to speak on that? Mr. Moorhead? Sure, why not? While Mr. Moorhead is making his way to the stand, I'll yield momentarily to Mr. Bob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Regarding this ordinance 18-14, the property owner who's petitioning that, uh, although I have 0% interest in this real estate, the property owner and I own another business, so I have a real estate together, therefore I will abstain from any future conversation and vote on this specific ordinance. Thank you. So I noted, thank you for bringing that forward. Okay, Mr. Moorhead. Uh, what you see is what you get, I guess. The uh, uh, a little more descriptive. request is for a zoning change to the uh, PUD district from the current uh, single-family residence district. There is a, they have submitted a plan, a PUD plan for our planning commission to review. If you're interested in seeing that, that can be provided to you. And... Um, but basically the first step is the ordinance uh, here that would be read and then sent to planning commission for just as any other zoning change. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Any questions from the audience? Do I hear a motion? Motion. Motion by Lang. Second. Second by Cost. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of sending this on to the Planning Commission, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, four ayes, zero nays, and one abstention by Mr. Pope. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And that concludes our service committee. Up next is Capital Improvements Committee. And I will let them decide as to whether they want to attempt to venture through that in the next 12 minutes or not. Okay, it is 6.48. I'd like to call this a meeting of the Capital Improvements Committee meeting uh, to order. Those present are myself, Mr. Lang, Mr. Finau, Mr. Lugutis, Mr. Rath, and Ms. Hall. Up first, we're going to consider uh, Resolution 18-39, appropriating monies for the current expenses of the Municipal Corporation. We've got an appropriation in the amount of $52,000. Hi, uh, this uh, appropriation is to help with the Cedar Hill Cemetery Road project. Um, the Tomorrow the Board of Control is going to hopefully award the contract for this project. Uh, the bulk of the funding is coming from the Department of Community Development. 
through its CDBG program, but we also need um, the 52,000 from capital improvements to complete um, the resurfacing of the roads at the cemetery. The project will be completed by August 31st. Thank you. Title. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Second. Motion by Rath. Second by Lubutis. Any discussion from the committee? Questions? Discussion, questions from the audience? Okay, with that, I will uh, vote to send this on to full council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. And that passes 5 0. Thank you. Okay, up next, we'll just, we will consider resolution 18 40, appropriating monies for the uh, current expenses of the municipal corporation. Got an appropriation in the amount of $70,000, 735. Thank you, Mr. Chair. About every five years, the engineer takes a look at our back parking deck and gets recommendations on what should be done to keep it in good shape and uh, keep it stable. Uh, we've taken the recommendations this year, and uh, the things that immediately need to be fixed, we're appropriating or asking council to appropriate the funds for. Thank you. That'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Motion by Rath, second by Hall. Any discussion or questions from the committee? Question. Mr. Rath. What does need repair? Well, if you go underneath of it, it's beginning to leak again. So it needs to be completely resurfaced. And then there's some uh, work underneath that will need to be completed. As well as we're having some plumbing stuff looked at, too, from where the stormwater comes in off the lot and the way it comes down through the drain. Some of those cast iron pipes are beginning to leak and rust. Any other questions from the committee? Questions from the audience? With that, we'll vote to send this on to full council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. And that passes 5-0. This committee stands adjourned, and we will reconvene for full council in about nine minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair.